have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a cool video that I normally don't uh, do, but it's uh, a look at a old destroyer called the Shimakaze, and someone asked me to take a look at it and what do I think of it. Before we begin, you see value in the video, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support at 2,000 subs, which we're almost there, by the way. Uh, we're going to do a free premium DD giveaway kind of raffle thing, whatever you want to call it. But it's going to be fun, and I, can't, and I can't thank you guys enough for helping us grow the channel, growing the community, and making it a better place. So... Let's talk about the Shimakaze. So actually, this thing has been around for a long, long time. As long as I've ever played the game, I've seen Shimakaze as being, I thought at the time, number one on the people's uh, uh, destroyer of choice. And it seemed like it, it, the biggest gimmick of it is it's got so many torpedoes, right? You're launching all these torpedoes, a wall of them, and really people enjoy the torp spamming and, and so forth. It's got great, I think it's got one of the best concealments in the game, uh, 5.6 concealment kilometers now that subs are available around. And I'll show you a video why subs don't belong in ranked or competitive and you'll explain why, or in the whole entire game for that matter. But um, yeah, Shimakaze's got, it touts as one of the best destroyers with concealment, meaning you can run around the map and not be spotted by anybody and you get first look, first kill. And uh, that was pretty much the selling point of it. It's, it's pretty fast and pretty, it's pretty nimble. It's got the engine boost. I mean, you're seeing I'm topping about 44-ish knots right there, even without the engine boost. Uh, you've seen me launch a spread of uh, three sets of five right there. They can go out to 20 kilometers. But you can spot these torpedoes from the moon. I mean, they're honking their horn and flashing lights as they're coming for you. So you can pretty much see them from a mile away. But And the reaction time is pretty good to dodge Shimakaze torpedoes. And uh, as you can see in the background, I'm just launching spreads all over the place. And this is more ranked, um, more kind of the style I like, more kind of clan battle-ish uh, style, 7 versus 7 on these uh, kind of small maps. Um, they do allow submarines at this point, so it's something I do not like. And that's why, again, I don't, again, I'll, I'll leave that topic alone. But um, what do I like about the Shimakaze? Well, the torpedoes, as you can see, are pretty fun. They're pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's hard to hit a lot of things with them. I honestly would rather do Yama Yamagiri um, style of uh, destroyer. Uh, Yamagiri is the super Shimakaze kind of battleship, or I'm sorry, um, destroyer that has uh, a little bit faster reloading guns. Uh, it's got the uh, reload booster for the guns, and it's also got the re. Uh, I'm forget. He's got the burst fire. Forgive me. Yamagiri's got the burst fire, and it's got the reload booster for the torpedoes. And I like that kind of play style better. I would choose that over Shimakaze any day. Of course, you can see the smoke screen. Again, that's another cool thing Shimakaze can do. It's kind of like the gearing where you're just laying smoke screens down for your friendlies and or you can use that for concealment. You can't really uh, HE spam as much because I noticed the gun reload is pretty horrendous if you don't build for it. It's up to the five or six second kind of time frame. That's very uncomfortable for me. And I've, that's probably the biggest lacking I see in the ship is I feel helpless. I feel like I can't do anything because I'm without um, while well, my torpedoes are on reload right now. I'm literally not able to shoot. I'm not able to do much because the guns are so weak. The re slow reload, and all I'm doing is just torp spamming. And people can see these things from a mile away, like I said, and they're dodging them with kind of fair easiness. It, I mean, they really have to screw up if uh, these torpedoes are coming at you and you're just getting a wall of them. Um, and the other thing is your spot. The, the primary role, I think, for the Shimakaze is just spotting, really. You're going around there with great concealment, good speed, and just really spotting the enemy for your team to shoot at free will and have at it. Or you notice I haven't fired my guns really that much, and I'm kind of just like sitting in the, in the middle here, just minding my own business. And it's kind of a boring gameplay to me. I mean, look at my health. is only 17.9 because I didn't build for it. I uh, don't have much health. You don't have much guns to work with. The gun turrets are slow as sin. I mean, look at look at my front gun turret. It's still taking its time. It's like the hamsters are rolling down downstairs trying to turn the gears. It's taking forever. Notice I missed all my torpedoes right there. I mean, you can again if someone's running hydro or whatever, they can see the, see these even further away, and have even more reaction time to it. So. Pretty much, this is all I'm doing. I mean, I can't shoot. I'm not doing any kind of AG spamming. I'm not really. I'm waiting for my torpedoes to reload, and that's really much it. My my smoke is on reload, so yeah. Hopefully, I get a hit right here. Oh my goodness! Come on, give, give me something. But um, how do I choose this? And I see a lot of people choose Shimakaze for you know competitive and ranked and and so forth. And I could see why maybe their play style is more of the standoffish role, spotting, not getting shot at, calm, kind of a peaceful kind of atmosphere. And that's just not me. I'm the aggressive, light my hair on fire, and just full throttle floor pedal to the metal, and just kind of blow everything in sight. And and that's that's kind of my kind of play style. Um, sorry, I meant to be you know blow everything out, blow everything away in sight. Oh, that's probably came out wrong too. Just blow up everything in sight. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyways, uh, you know uh, I'm a pilot, so dirty minds. Uh, anyways, yeah, Shimakaze. 
Eh. It, it, to my personal opinion, I never choose this ship. And this is exactly the reason why. I feel just like I'm worthless. I'm not contributing to the fight much. I'm spotting, yeah, but I mean, everybody's spotting everybody when they're shooting. So and all I can do pretty much at this point is just YOLO torp run right here. So I lose my, you know, my destroyer Des Moines and um, low health Montana. Yeah, this is prime one-on-one. -on -one. This is prime, uh, you know, roll right here. Just driving straight at him and torping him. Hopefully my slim profile is good enough for his gun dispersion's terrible that he cannot hit me. If he damages my torpedoes, I'm SOL. I mean, I am out of luck right here, but you know what? Uh, I'm waiting for him to go nose in a little bit better so I can make a decision where to turn. He, yep, gives me great broadside. Just launch everything right here, why not? Yep, one uh, of his shots in his tur gun turrets just cannot keep up in there. Woo, look at that. That just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Just, just a wall of torpedoes. That's all really I can do. My guns are worthless. My smoke's worthless. At that point, engine boost is on, and I'm just running around the map with my head cut off. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I think about it. The, the pros of it, like I said, speed, concealment, smoke, and maybe some torpedo kind of runs. Uh, but the, the the negatives are slow gun turret traverse, slow uh, uh, gun reload, really no contributing factor to take on DDs. And I'm a DD main, so I'm hunting DDs down. Shimakaze does not do that very well. I'm usually hunting Shimas down. And, uh, man, look at all the trash talk going on in the, uh, in the chat room right there. So, yeah, um, as this plays out, uh, I'll speed up the video. But what would I – honestly, I would not choose this. Um, and that's the reason why. As you can see right here, it's kind of a boring style gameplay. It doesn't really contribute much. And that's me. And Shima Pukaze, it seems like it's always hunted down and blown to smithereenies by radar cruisers, radar destroyers, everything, and so forth. And, that, again, that's why I don't play it. Uh, but the what destroyer would I choose over this? If it had to rank and rack and stack, maybe the most comparable thing to this thing, uh, I would actually choose the gearing. And here it is. As you can see, the gearing. Uh, one of my favorite first destroyers I ever got in the game uh, was the gearing. It just looks so cool. Or I'm sorry, first tier 10 because it just looks awesome. I mean, look at the guns, the design, uh, the two turrets. The 127 millimeter guns are traditional of the American fleet. They're the secondaries on most battleships of the American fleet. It just looks awesome. Um, I like the look of it. It looks powerful. It looks sleek. It's fast. It's got good concealment. Look at that 5.9 concealment. Yeah, the Shima Shimakaze has 5.6, which which can outspot me. But you know what? I just drive another 0.3, and I got them. And torpedoes are awesome, too. They go out to 16.5, so nothing to gawk at. Just as fast. A little bit better detection uh, uh, deniability, so you, it's a little bit harder reaction time. You see the Schlieffen took one right there. So... Again, I think it's really... Oh, look at this. I mean, another one. A GK taking two more. I mean, I'm just launching spreads out there. I'm getting way better hits on it. Torpedoes are doing a little bit better, a little bit faster. Uh, and they do just substantial damage. 38,000 damage you can see right there. I got the long American smoke screen. I mean, these smokes last forever. So another positive right there for clan and competitive. Where I'm laying down a wall. I think I played with a, a one a hurricane... Or no, I played with the uh, hurricane clan where they told me, hey... Put engine boost on, put your max build for smoke and everything, and you're going to race across the map at, like, literally, you know, 38 to 40 knots and lay out, and then massive mile-long smoke screen. And it works really well. It looks pretty awesome. Um, very, very high level of gameplay. I normally don't play it like that. I normally save the smoke screen for when I'm in danger or if I'm near a bunch of ships that need kind of just the basic concealment right then and there for, an like, an island or a wall right off the bat. Torpedo reload is really good on the uh, that gearing. You can see right there it was about less than 90 seconds, so a minute and a half. Uh, very, very good reload, very good shots, very good damage, and the guns are awesome. Like I said, the American uh, guns, the 127 millimeters are awesome. They, they shoot, they have a great reload, great turret traverse, so way better. It outguns the Shima right there, right off the bat. So um, health pull's great, 22,009 is the standard for a DD right now. No heals, by the way. That's the one downside, I would say. It, is not a, a gunboat uh, like that per se in the sense that you want to duke it out with other DDs, especially now the DDs that are rocking the 28 to 30,000 HP point and radar DDs out there. Yeah, it's really difficult for, and there's another hit right there. Uh, DD, radar DDs and everything like that, like Haraguma Smolens and Ragnars and Gdanskas. Yeah, this gearing doesn't stand a chance, honestly, my personal opinion, other than smoke, run away, and use the engine boost to get out of there. That, that's all you can really do. It, it maybe can do this little spamming right here that I'm about to do. You can see, well, I'm just going to mop it up right here this is pretty much the gearing mop up yeah steel kill right there um but that's all really a gearing does and smoke up and you can lay in the smoke for about two minutes and seven seconds right you see how long that smoke screen is this thing's last so long it's like literally putting down an island in front of everybody uh and really just shooting from smoke and spamming you could do that uh it, it can do it I'm, I'm not saying 
that the gearings guns are um you know uh, negligent but or nothing to look at but yeah it's really really good and uh the smoke screen lasts so long like i said two minutes right there as you can see the last puff right there like you can see the timer just started ticking down from two minutes and nine seconds oh it's still two minute nine yeah, and now it can start going down. So, wow, I it literally took that um, smoke screen. It takes that long to disperse it and that long to uh, go away. So pretty awesome there. I like it. Gearing, yeah, one of my favorites. I I've got to say, uh, although I don't pick it a lot in competitive because of the fact that it just can't survive that long, if I want to go out there and touch somebody and go do some uh, DD hunting or whatnot, uh, is really the primary role is like a Shimakaiser role. Go out there, spot, lay smoke screens, torp, from a distance and then mop up any kind of dds or whatever at the end when you're surviving for the long haul and that's why i think a lot of people pick gearings for competitive and maybe ranked uh, as well because it, it does the role very very effectively very uh good uh aspects of it so yeah like i said pros and cons if i had to put the shima and the gearing up like i said shima's got the concealment gearing's got a little bit of better concealment better torpedoes in the gearing not so much shima uh the gun reloads great on the gearing not so much shima and the turret traverse is terrible maneuverability is great for both of them i i think they're both highly maneuverable destroyers uh and really that's it i mean um that that's how it rack and stack that again I, that's why i don't pick the shima a lot because it just doesn't give me any of the tools that i need to be effective uh, and to be a good destroyer player in the fight. So that's what I think about it. Um, I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the video. I'll let it play in the background. But uh, that that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, I don't pick Shima. I'd rather pick a gearing. And if I had to choose a gearing and something else, I'd pick something else, honestly, because gearing is not kind of my play style. And I know a lot of the higher clans and competitive like that more. And um, that's that's how they play it. And uh, here's another video clip that I included because it has a submarine in it. Uh, but anyways, look at that. Taking a torpedo hit and the Harugumo just could not dodge it in time. And actually, when his health is this low, now you can open up on the guns. And here's a good demonstration of how the guns are. Great reload, good accuracy, good damage, and boom. Yep, I mean, if I can take on a Harugumo like that uh, in smoke and with ease, yeah, and with a little bit of support and a couple torpedo damages, yeah, that's really good. Um, now, here's the issue that um, I wanted to include in this video is just how annoying submarines are in uh, competitive. And I can understand why they don't include it in, in cl uh, clan battles. And that's exactly right. They should include it in ranked either because it just doesn't serve uh, the, the game's purpose. Uh, you're introducing, like I said, uh, and here's a good torpedo run on the Salem right here. Look at the distance. I'm, I'm outside of his radar range and... I can torp from a distance, boom, get some nice damage, 17,000 right there. And look, there's the torpedo, there's the, I'm sorry, the submarine right there. Nothing I can do about it. Look at this. So he, at any moment, he can outspot me. So a submarine can outspot me. And that, that's the downside of me and a destroyer and a gearing. Look, and he can pop up, fire uh, his um, sonar ping. And look, he's, he's going to do this little tactic right here. Now you got, I don't know how else to go against this other than, okay, don't shoot. But what, that does, what kind of gameplay is that? Okay, he's, he surfaces real quick. Okay, he's gonna let me fire so that he spots me and I, I'm spotted from the world because someone else is probably seeing my guns shoot if someone's available. And then he goes underwater again. So what kind of gameplay engagement is that? I mean, he can literally do this over and over again where he can go up and go down, go up and go down. It's like he has unlimited smoke screens. He's using water as a smoke screen and he's just going up and down, up and down. How, what kind of counter is that? I mean, you can't do anything other than drive in towards him. And now the new update says that less than three kilometers, 2.9 and down, those torpedoes don't do much damage. Like I don't think they only do 10%. And what kind of gameplay is this? It's kind of stagnant. Nothing I can do other than I can't even use my guns. I can't even spot them. I don't have Hydra. I don't have anything. Really unengaging. And look where he's at the map. He's literally in the back of the map. Where's the fun in that? And uh, so if he pops up around surfaces and I try to shoot at him, I'm going to get spotted by the GK. And that's a very, very uh, terrible, uh, say, disadvantage of gameplay style. I mean, they really need to remove submarines because it doesn't do any good for the game. I mean, what, what, where's the engagement in this? The submarine's underwater. Whoop de do! I can't do anything other than wait for him to spot me first. He gets that now. Look, he can go up again, spot me, and then dive again, and then sonar ping me again. Here he goes. This another sonar ping. What can I do other than run away and damage con? Yay! What what kind of enjoyment is that? I mean, and even if I wanted to have an airdrop ASW airdrop bomber, what, what where, where where's the fun in like taking a square and putting it on a area I think a submarine is and just clicking on a mouse button and hoping something happens and that's it that's the game the game is me dropping like literally bird poop in water 
in Hobbit 6. I mean, that is not engaging in all wargaming. You're an idiot for doing something like this. This is the most... And I'm sorry I'm angry about it because it doesn't add any effectiveness to the game. And, and all you can, all people can say is, hey, stop playing the game. It's like, no, I mean, this, I've invested a lot of time into this. This is a great game. It builds a good community. However, the only other thing is the gaming, com- the, uh, gaming developer is trying to destroy that community by introducing something that doesn't help anything. You see, what enjoyment do you get out of it? And I hope submarines fail. I hope submarines lose money. I hope submarines really don't do anything other than create your own little mode and go off and do your own thing. That's all I'll support. But it does nothing for a surface warfare game. Remember that. Just like in World of Tanks, you don't introduce Apache gunships and A-10s into a a, a surface tank game. It doesn't make sense, right? Uh, So... And you can tell like how the, uh, this other guy in the submarine's fed up with his team because yeah, because he, he can't do anything in the submarine. He's just sitting in the back. And it, what does his teammate guys do? They come out from the resurrect from the dead and go underwater like him and try to kill him. Anyways, I digress. That that was my gripe about it. But anyways, Shima gearing. I don't play the Shima. Uh, I don't prefer it. I'd rather pr- choose the gearing over everything. But hope you guys are doing well. Say hi if you see me out there. As always, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, stay safe. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.